When I realized that I couldn't get out, I felt really scared. I was in a laboratory and the only door was locked. I pounded on my fists and called out for help, but no one came. A lump rose to my throat. I was such a fool. What was gonna happen to me now? I sank into a chair and put my head in my hands. You? Hi, I'm Roxy. I never liked studying much. Hanging out with my friends and shopping was much more interesting. I was quite pretty and always had a lot of admirers. One of them was the class rep, Sam. I often used that nerd's infatuation with me to get better marks. But it seemed I'd run out of luck as I failed another biology test. If you fail tomorrow's lab, you'll be in big trouble. I really was going to prepare. But my friends invited me to a party, so I came home late and I didn't learn anything. In the morning, I barely made myself get up and go downstairs. While I was having breakfast, there was news on the TV. Yesterday, a group of students and a college professor went missing in the mountains. Roxy, you came home in the middle of the night, again! You should have been studying! Mom. If this keeps up, I'm taking away your pocket money. The threat worked. There was gonna be a cool summer collection on sale soon. I couldn't miss it. My mood plummeted. I knew I was gonna fail the lab. They would call mom to the school, and then I'd have to wave my pocket money goodbye. But then something unexpected happened. When I walked into the biology classroom, a man I didn't recognize was sitting at the teacher's desk. He looked young and <laughs> pretty handsome. When everyone was finally seated, he introduced himself. Hi, I'm Mr. Collins, your new biology teacher. Wow, <laughs> we were so lucky. All the girls immediately started giggling and looking at him with interest. Sam got up from his seat. I'm the class rep. We're supposed to be working in the lab today. Ugh, I wanted to hit him. What an idiot. Why would he say that? Change of plans. I have special teaching methods. So from this day on, there's gonna be new rules. No textbooks and no cramming. Only practical classes. Everyone was pleasantly surprised. Sam was the only one who looked annoyed. Now, let's do an experiment. Does anyone want to assist me? Several people raised their hands. But for some reason, Mr. Collins chose me. <sighs> I was in trouble again. But it turned out I was worried for nothing. Mr. Collins demonstrated an experiment with plants. He gave me special gloves and he asked me to hold them. Well done. You're doing great. Everyone was discussing the new teacher at recess. He's so cool. Now we don't have to cram. I think he's kind of weird. The next day, I came to school early. My first class was biology again, and Mr. Collins asked me for help once more. We put microscopes and other devices on the tables. I was trying to flirt with him. I knew he was my teacher, but how could I resist? When the lesson started, Mr. Collins asked me for help again. Roxy, you're gonna be my assistant. Wow, you should have seen the way the other girls glared at me. While the other students were bending over microscopes, I was handing out papers and collecting test tubes. At some point, I accidentally twisted my ankle and fell. The tray with the test tubes fell to the floor and they broke. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not a big deal. How could I be mad at such a beautiful girl? Come on, I'll help you clean up. Did you hear that? He said it was beautiful! Now, my classmates were looking at me with outright hatred. Sam came up to me at recess. Please be careful. The new teacher is really suspicious. What are you talking about? That's nonsense. Ugh. I had to stay for remedial math after classes that day because I'd skipped too many lessons. It started to rain heavily as I was leaving the school. As luck would have it, I didn't have an umbrella with me. Mr. Collins suddenly came out of the school. My car is in the parking lot. I could give you a ride. Naturally, I agreed. As we were leaving, I saw Sam nearby. He clenched his fists and glared at us. Mr. Collins talked about his unusual teaching methods as we drove, and I liked listening to him. Spending time with him was so much more interesting than with my peers. Before going to bed, I found myself thinking about Mr. Collins. I wanted to impress him. The next day, I started reading biology textbooks and watching videos on the subject. I kept volunteering to assist him in class. Gradually, Mr. Collins' lessons became weirder and weirder. One day, he even brought a Venus flytrap to the classroom. It was huge! We had to feed it insects. Ah! It bit me! Be careful. Use my first aid kit. After that, Mr. Collins brought a terrarium with a giant spider to class. He began to dissect it and showed us how to extract its poison. 
Then, he suggested we take turns looking at it. One girl had arachnophobia and fainted. The first aid kit and smelling salts had to be used again. Despite all that, everyone liked the lessons so much more than the normal ones. Or rather, almost everyone. Sam was still unhappy. He was even asking Mr. Collins provocative questions during lessons. I guess he wanted to catch him in a lie. But of course, nothing worked. At first, I was only interested in biology because of Mr. Collins. But then, I really came to like the subject. I even missed out on that sale to study at home. Mom was really happy about it. Good girl, you finally come to your senses. One day, I came up to Mr. Collins. I want to know more. Could you maybe tutor me? Hmm, okay. We could meet after school. We started spending a lot of time together. One day, we even had a snack in the cafe near the school. At some point, I saw Sam through the window. He was hiding around the corner and looking at us intently. Was that nerd following me? The next day, I decided I would confront him. What are you trying to achieve? Why are you spying on me? I'm spying on Mr. Collins, not on you. I've already found out something. Soon enough, I'll expose him. I got angry. Leave him alone, okay? It was clear from Sam's face that he wasn't going to give up that easily. A couple days after that, Mr. Collins brought an x-ray machine to class. Now, you'll see what our lungs look like. Roxy, will you assist me? As usual, I agreed, undressed behind a screen, and came up to the machine. All of my classmates were staring at me, especially Sam. He suddenly jumped up from his seat. This is wrong. You've gone too far. Sam ran out of the classroom. While he was away, Mr. Collins calmly talked about the way our lungs functioned. Soon, Sam came back with the principal in tow. Look what's going on in our lessons. First, there was a Venus flytrap, then spiders, and now this. Mr. Collins, come to my office. After they left, everyone started discussing what had happened. Well, that's it. He'll definitely be fired now. <clears throat> but I didn't think so. I quickly dressed and I ran to the principal's office. I wanted to protect Mr. Collins, but the office was locked. They wouldn't even let me inside. Heck, at recess, I told Sam everything I thought about him. I know you're in love with me. You're just mad because you're jealous. Admit it. Sam blushed and then mumbled something unintelligible. But the troubles didn't end there. I stayed late after school, hoping to talk to Mr. Collins, but he was nowhere to be seen. When I got home, I ran into Sam again. You'll never guess what happened. He talked to my mom. Roxy fell in love with our teacher. That's why she's trying so hard at biology. Roxy, what is the meaning of this? You do realize he's older than you. Why has your principal done nothing about this? It, it's not like that. Mom didn't listen to a word I said and still called the school. I was beside myself with rage. You're mad at me, but soon you'll realize I'm right. Angry? No, Sam, I hate you. No one knew what to expect the next day. However, when we walked into the classroom, Mr. Collins was there. Hooray! He hadn't been fired after all. I was going to assist him as usual, but he waved me off. Please take your seat. He ignored me the whole lesson. I was upset and I tried to find out why. Something wrong? Are, are you gonna be fired? Everything's fine. I didn't dare ask him to tutor me again and I went home in a terrible mood. I was walking down the street when a familiar car suddenly stopped next to me. Let me give you a ride. I was delighted and I got into the car. The principal gave me a warning about you yesterday. Sam is spreading rumors about us, so we should keep our distance where people can see. I will tutor you in my personal laboratory. We went there that day. The laboratory was located on the outskirts of the city. It was on the ground floor of an old building that kind of resembled a bunker. There were a lot of research papers and equipment in it, and I also saw a photo of Mr. Collins standing next to some young people. Judging by their ages, it looked like they were students. Oh, did you work in a college? Mr. Collins kind of stiffened. I worked in a lot of places. He got to teaching me. At some Ooh. point, I noticed a folder lying on the very edge of the table, and I decided to move it a bit. Don't touch that. I was startled and immediately pulled my hand back. What was wrong with him? A couple hours later, Mr. Collins drove me home. And the next day, Sam came up to me again. Why aren't you listening to me? Why are you still hanging out with Mr. Collins? Are you spying on me again? Look, you're in danger. He's a criminal. People went missing because of him. Don't go to his laboratory anymore, no matter what. Soon, I'll have enough evidence to actually go to the police. I swirled my finger at my temple. It seemed like Sam had completely lost his mind. After the principal's visit, 
biology lessons became a little less original. Mr. Collins couldn't bring anything like an x-ray machine or a Venus flytrap again. But one day, he asked me to stay after class. I left the samples in the lab. Could you go get them? Yeah, of course! No problem! I arrived at the laboratory and immediately found the right samples. Then, my eyes suddenly fell on the folder that Mr. Collins hadn't let me touch. I wondered what was in it. I hesitated a little, but I finally decided to open it. Inside was a dossier on some students. Wait a minute, those were the college students from that photo. There was information about their health, age, the condition of their lungs under the photo. The more I read, the more uncomfortable I felt. A girl in one of the photos looked really familiar. I thought about it. Where had I seen her? And then it hit me. Of course! A few weeks ago, a news presenter had spoken about missing students and a professor on TV. Was Mr. Collins the missing professor? But how did he end up in our school? I looked through the folder and I froze. It couldn't be. There was information about me in it. The condition of my lungs was even highlighted with red marker. Had Mr. Collins given me an x-ray on purpose? But why? I felt really scared. I put the folder back in its place and was about to leave. The door was locked. Only Mr. Collins knew I was here. H had he locked me up? All sorts of horrors immediately came to my mind. It seemed Sam had been right. Mr. Collins was a criminal. What was he gonna do with me? And then I realized, where had an ordinary teacher gotten money for a laboratory like this at all? I wanted to call someone, but I realized there was no signal there. I sat down on a chair and put my head in my hands. What a mess. You? I was afraid I wouldn't make it in time. I followed Collins and found out the code on his lock yesterday. That's how I opened the door. Sam, you were right. About everything. Look at these photos. Sam flipped through the students' dossiers and looked at the photos. I found out that Collins used to work at a college. Some time ago, he headed off to the mountains with a group of students. After a while, he never came back, and he got a job at our school. But he used a different name. Those students were never found. He had to have done something to them. He's too obsessed with his research. I believed Sam now. We quickly took photos of every document, ran from the laboratory, and contacted the police. Mr. Collins called me several times, but I didn't pick up the phone. The cops studied the photos of the documents and they listened to our story. And soon, Mr. Collins was detained at an airport. That bastard. He would probably realized we had evidence and wanted to escape. Sam and I had to stay at the station until the evening. I felt so nervous and tired. How could I have been this wrong about someone? As we were leaving, I accidentally bumped into someone. I'm sorry. I looked up and froze. <gasps> to say that I was shocked would be to say nothing. Standing in front of me was Mr. Collins. But how was this possible? He was supposed to be being interrogated or something. Sam was also stunned and stared at him, dumbfounded. M Mr. Collins? No, I'm Mr. Gray. We're twins. Our teacher and a couple of cops suddenly came out on the porch. We finally found out the truth. It turned out that Mr. Collins had a twin brother. He was the professor from the college. They had different surnames because Mr. Gray had argued with their father and then changed it. The brothers were both talented scientists. They were working together on a science project trying to develop a cure for lung diseases. They'd even received a research grant and used that money to help build the laboratory. Mr. Gray had taken a group of students who'd helped him, and they'd gone up into the mountains to study the effects of the medicine in rarefied air. However, they'd gotten unlucky with the weather and had to hide in a cave for a long time. That was when their story had been shown on TV. The group got out, but the bad weather had lasted for a long time, and the air traffic had shut down there. They'd only just come back that day. I wasn't trying to run away. I just went to the airport to meet my brother. But who locked me in the lab then? Nobody, but I'm sorry, that's still my fault. I forgot to tell you to turn off the security system. It worked and the door closed. Sam was even more shocked than I was. After Mr. Collins was released, he apologized. I'm sorry I said nasty things about you. I'm sorry too. I imagined all sorts of horrors when I was trapped. Don't worry about it. What matters is that everyone's okay. Roxy, could I talk to you? As we walked away, Mr. Collins sighed. I noticed the way that you've been looking at me. You know, I often change jobs because of students like you. I look young and the students fall in love with me and it creates problems. Please forget about me and take a closer look at your peers, at least at Sam. The guy is head over heels in love with you. I couldn't think of anything to say to that and I just nodded, confused. Soon, Mr. Collins had to resign after all. 
and it was all because of my mom. She caused a real scandal, but I kept studying biology on my own. I no longer relied on my looks, and I wanted to become a real scientist. Sam still likes me, but I'm not interested in him. To be honest, <sighs> I still can't forget Mr. Collins. Have you ever fallen in love with someone that's older than you? What should I do? 